Good morning, St. Andrews. My name is Greg Chow. I'm an elder at the church and I will be doing a lab teaching for today since uh, Pastor Brian is on the pulpit and he asked me to kind of fill in for him. It's an honor to do that. So today we're going to be looking at a couple, Priscilla and Aquila. They are friends of Paul. We meet them in Acts. They are leaders in the Ephesians church. There's only four passages that mention them, but they, I would characterize them as faithful, a faithful couple. Now, one of the interesting things that you might notice is that Priscilla, who's the woman, is mentioned first, Priscilla and Aquila. And in scripture, that's how uh, they're referred to most of the time. Uh, there's speculation on exactly why that's the case, because it's not common practice. Uh, but I think it spe speaks well of the New Testament in that it really doesn't matter whether you're a male or female. Uh, remember in Galatians, it says, for there is neither uh, Jew nor Greek, male nor female. Christ is all and in all. And so in the New Testament, you see women taking a huge role in the church, and that's how it should be. I thought it's kind of interesting, the references to the woman first. So if you see Sandy and I in the uh, quad there, go ahead and call us uh, Sandy and Greg, or you can refer to me as, oh, you must be Sandy's husband. And certainly... It's scriptural not to be offended by that because there's no jealousy in marriage, right? I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, let's go through the four passages. I thought we'd just go through the four passages that mention it. Oh, by the way, the little painting below, it's a, just an artist rendition. You can see Priscilla and Aquila next to Paul. And it turns out Priscilla and Aquila are tent makers uh, or leather workers just like Paul was, and that's how they first met. Okay, so let's go to Acts 18. And uh, this is the first passage. So after this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. I'm just going to pause here to show you a map of the area just to get yourself acquainted. You can see where Corinth is. I circled it in blue. And right next to it is Athens. So it's kind of in the center there. And to the top left, you'll see Rome. And to the lower uh, right, you'll see Jerusalem. This is kind of the map of Paul's journeys. Now, a little background on Corinth. Corinth was a big political commercial city. It's a rival of Athens. You can kind of think of it as the LA or New York of uh, the times. Uh, interesting history, and it was leveled by Roman, Rome because of a revolt in 146 BC. It was re-founded as a city in 46 BC by Julius Caesar. And then by 27 BC, it became the capital of the region. So you see that uh, circle in blue, you see it, Achaia, which is the entire region there, and it became the capital. It was known for a sexual license, and I refer to that because if you read 1 Corinthians, that's one of the things that people were struggling with in the church. Okay, so let's move on. It says, uh, there he met a Jew, that's Paul. He met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius, who was the emperor, ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Turns out we actually have a record of Claudius uh, uh, banishing people from Rome. So let me go to it. There's a little quote on the bottom. As the Jews were indulging in constant riots at the instigation of Christus, I'm thinking that's Christ. He banished them from Rome. It's a misspelling of, of Christ. And that's actually from the historian Sestonius in the life of Claudius. So we have an outside court, um, uh, validation of uh, 
this this record in in Acts 18, and of Claudius pushing people out of Rome, and you I also circle Pontus there because you can see where Aquila's from. Let's go back to the passage there. And I was thinking there's a lesson here, you know. There may be times in your life and certainly in my life where things don't go according to the way we think it should. Uh, we get laid off from a job, we have to move. Uh, something happens that we interpret as bad, out of our comfort zone. In this case, uh, Priscilla and Aquila had to be had to flee Rome, had to be pushed out of Rome by the emperor. And it actually turned out for good because if we read on, Paul went to see them and because he was a tent maker and tent maker there is more like a leather worker. So they work on coats and curtains and various things, including tents. As they were, he stayed and worked with them so being pushed out of Rome was an opportunity that God used uh, so, that, so that they could meet Paul. And because they had a common trade, they became fast friends. Every Sabbath, he, Paul, reasoned in the synagogue trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. Okay, let me... Uh, Let's read on. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. Now, this is kind of interesting because Silas and Timothy uh, brought back information about Thessalo the Thessalonian church. And we think that at this point that Paul was so happy with the news that he wrote First Thessalonians from here. We also think that he received a gift from the Philippian church, and you can kind of read about that in 2 Corinthians 11 or Philippians 4.15. The Philippians regularly sent money to Paul, and Paul, in this case, used the money so that he doesn't have to uh, do the leather working, and he could devote himself to preaching at the synagogue. What a wonderful thing, right, to... Uh, that, that Paul was able to be freed up to preach. But when they opposed Paul and became abusive, he shook out his clothes in protest and said to him, your blood be on your own head. I am innocent of it. From now on, I go to the Gentiles. So they were, this is Paul's reaction to how abusive the people in the synagogue were. And so he said, well, if you don't want to listen to me, I'm going to go to people who will listen. So here's what he did. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door. He went right next door to the house of Titius Justus, a worshiper of God. Now, Titius Justus is a Roman. Uh, you, we can tell by the way he's described the worshiper of God uh, and his name. And so he's a Gentile. And so he, uh, he took... He, he made that his base of operation. It's right next to the synagogue. Here's another coup that he did. Crispus, the synagogue leader. Now, one of the leaders of the synagogue and his entire household believed in the Lord. So uh, you have one of the leaders of the synagogue uh, converting. And, uh, and, and many of the Corinthians who heard Paul believed and were baptized. So this is wonderful. And we're going to, uh, so now one of the leaders, uh, the leader of the synagogue Jew and the Gentiles are forming the uh, basis of the church in Corinth with Priscilla and Aquila. And we'll run into them uh, in a minute again. Okay, so one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent for I am with you. And no one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in the city. So Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. Um, so Paul spent a long time in Corinth and uh, shoring up the church. And he received the vision that he was not going to be harmed 
now, now Priscilla and Aquila is observing all of this and how their heart must have been encouraged by the work of God through Paul. When Galileo, the proconsul of Achaia, the, the Jews of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the to a place, the place of judgment. This man they charge is persuading the people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. Now, Galileo is another person that we have a lot of information about outside of the Bible. Well, let's let's look at some of the information we have. Galileo, his name was Marcus Anias Novatus. His father was Seneca, who was a rhetorician, um, and we know his birth and death. And his younger brother was fairly famous. Uh, he was a philosopher, and we know his birth and death. Galileo was adopted by Lu Lu Lucius Junius Galileo, and he took his name. And he was later on killed by Nero. Nero was a bad guy. Uh, and he was killed in 65 AD. Now we know a little bit about his personality uh, from writings of his brother. He was charming, he was witty. No mortal is so pleasant to any one person as Galileo is to everybody. This is a writing from his brother. And we know the dating of when he was uh, appointed as proconsul in, of Achaia from the inscription in Delphi in central Greece recording a proclamation made by Emperor Claudius between the end of 51 and August 52, it can be inferred that he entered upon Achaia's proconsulship in July of 51. So we can narrow down uh, the dating of, the, of this incident within a year or two of when it happened. Amazing. One of the things that uh, as we study scripture, we are heartened by the historical validity of the records, especially Acts. Okay, so just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo said to them, if you Jews are making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves question about words and names in your own law, settle the matter for yourselves. I will not judge of such things. So he drove them off. Then the crowd there turned to Sustheans, the synagogue ruler. Now notice that the synagogue ruler is different than before because Crispus converted. So they had to find a new synagogue ruler. ruler. Um, so Sustheans the synagogue ruler and beat him in front of the proconsul and Galileo showed no concern, whatever. I think this is God's providence uh, that he put a leader, Galileo, who was a fairly reasonable guy and was smart enough to know not to get involved. And this actually set a precedence because he was leader of the region. And so this allowed Paul to go into other cities in the region and outside the region, and he and the Romans would not get involved in punishing the Christians because of this incident, this precedent that Galileo sent. So this was very. This is actually a very important event. Uh, isn't it wonderful how God uh, works out? circumstances uh, behind the scenes that sometimes we don't even know. Um, and in this case, this is how God is encouraging Paul, protecting Paul, uh, and, and, and helping him spread the good news. Okay, so Paul stayed in Corinth for some time, and we know it's a year and a half. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by none other than Priscilla and Aquila. Notice again that the woman's name is mentioned first. Uh, before he sailed, he had his hair cut off in Sencria because of a vow he had taken. So he had taken a vow, uh, and we don't exactly know what the vow is, and he let his hair grow long. And so the vow has ended and he just cut it. 
Um, so this is what uh, they are talking about. Now they ar they arrived in Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila. So now Priscilla and Aquila and Paul are in Ephesus. He himself went to the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Sound familiar? So he goes to the synagogue first. When they asked him to spend more time with them, he declined. But as he left, he promised, I will come back if God will. So Paul was in a hurry. He was in a hurry to move, and he was trying to get to Jerusalem. I think it's because of the Passover. So he went to Ephesus and spoke in the synagogue, and he, they were interested, but he had to leave. Uh, so we set sail from Ephesus. When he landed in Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. And that would be good now to go back to our map. And you can see here that he moved from Cor Corinth to Ephesus. Uh, in pur you can see it in purple, that purple arrow. And he only stayed there shortly because he was on his way to Caesarea. You can see that he went to Caesarea and then to Jerusalem and uh, probably stayed pass, uh, pass over there. And he went back, he went down to Antioch, which is north. You can see Antioch. And then begins his um, last, uh, his third missionary journey in yellow, uh, where he went to uh, Galatia um, to, to encourage the brothers there. But uh, so uh, let's speak a little bit about Ephesus. Ephesus was a great commercial city in Asia Minor. He's a capital in that region. Uh, it, it was a main route to Rome and it was a free Greek city with its own Senate. Uh, it had one of the seven wonders of the world at the time, the temple of uh, Artem Artemis. And there was a large colony of Jews with favored status. And so now, uh, one of the things you have to say about Priscilla and Aquila is that they were willing to move. They were willing to uproot, uh, move from Corinth. They were there for a year and a half with Paul. And then now they've moved to Ephesus and Paul left them there. Um, and so they're, they're, they're in Ephesus now. <clears throat> And eventually they become leaders in the church of Ephesus. So let's read on. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the ways of the Lord and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. Okay, so that we have this guy named Apollos. And, you know, my theory is that Apollos wrote Hebrews, but um, that's for another discussion. But he was a very learned man. He was a very uh, strong, he argued strongly for the gospel, but he only knew about the baptism of John. So he probably wasn't there uh, in when um, in the beginning of Acts, right? When the Holy Spirit came down. Um, and so he only knew of the baptism of John. So Priscilla and Aquila, good servants of the Lord, pulled him aside, invited him to their home and explained uh, more of, of the scripture so that he could have a fuller knowledge. Uh, okay, so uh, so he's mentioned in First Corinthians as well, Apollos, and so again here you can see that Priscilla and Aquila are just faithful, um, and and were able to uh, help this brother Apollos who became uh, a leader in the church. Okay, so we'll just move on to the next mention of of them. So Paul, uh, this is two years later now, Paul is in Ephesus. Uh, he's, he's writing from, uh, 
Ephesus to uh, Corinthians. The church in the province of Asia sends you greeting. Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly. Now notice in this case, Aquila is named first. Greet you warmly. And so Paul is writing from Ephesus and uh, Aquila and Priscilla are part of the church. And so, and they know about the Corinthians. So in this case, uh, Paul writes along and he says, look, Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord. And so there's a church that meets in their house. So in this case, we now learn that Aquila and Priscilla have a little a church that's meeting in their house. And this is how the church was during those days. They didn't have separate buildings. They met in homes. All the brothers and sisters here send you greeting. Greet one another with a holy kiss. Okay. And so this is two years later. Then we have another record in Romans. And this is six years later. And in this case, um, Paul is writing from Jerusalem to the, uh, to, the, uh, to, to the Romans. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ. They risked their lives for me, not only I, but the church of the Gentiles uh, are grateful to them. I wish, you know, I, uh, I wish that would be said of me, right? Uh, that, that, uh, we are fellow co-workers, you know, in the Lord and that their love for the Lord, that they risk their lives and their love for Paul. They love, they risk their lives for Paul and, uh, were bought, they were bought in, uh, you know, they were all in, in terms of the gospel of Christ. And this is six years later. We have one more mention of Priscilla and Aquila here in 2 Timothy 4, 18 to 20. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Priscilla and Aquila. Now, in this case, again, Priscilla is mentioned first. Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Onesphorus. And these uh, three were in the church of uh, Ephesus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, and I left Trophimus sick in, in Miletus. This is 14 years later. Um, so they're still in Ephesus, serving faithfully in the church. Um, and this is during Paul's imprisonment in Rome. Um, pretty close to when he will be executed, beheaded uh, in Rome. Uh, and, and he's writing to Timothy. So this, these are the records that we know of Priscilla and Aquila, faithful servants of the Lord. Uh, so what can we say? Uh, first of all, I think as, as we kind of go through the records, it's amazing the historical accuracy of the records that we have uh, of the letters and acts and how they all fit together in Romans, Corinthians, Philippians, we mentioned the lot, uh, Thessalonians, Timothy, and they all kind of fit together uh, to form records that we know. What can we say about Priscilla and Aquila? Well, they're flexible, right? They're willing to be uprooted to follow God wherever God leads. I think there's a lesson here that there may be times where we don't really understand uh, something bad happens. We have to be uprooted uh, or move and the Lord uses it to, uh, for our, our own good or for a good purpose. Uh, in this case, Priscilla and Aquila, they had the opportunity to uh, meet Paul and then eventually settle in Ephesus and become leaders of the church there. They were unified. Uh, there's no jealousy before them. I, th uh, In my understanding, this is really one of the few mentions in the New Testament of, of this of a couple together, always mentioned together. They had a strong marriage. They were a team. Um, and we know they were gracious. 
uh, to a polis and they open their home to uh, the church in Ephesus, uh, always being hospitable, being gracious. gracious. And lastly, they're risk takers. Uh, we know that they risked their lives for Paul and for the church. Uh, I was just thinking of, uh, uh, first of all, you know, I try to use an acronym, F-U-R, FUR. Uh, maybe that will be easier for you to remember. And lastly, I, I was just thinking, you know, it's better to be faithful than famous. Uh, here is a couple that uh, just served the Lord with what they had, with what they knew, and they were faithful to the end. Um, so let's pray and, and uh, um, happy Mother's Day again. Lord, we thank you that we have uh, such strong records of people like Priscilla and Aquila who have been faithful, faithful with what they have, uh, affirming, unified, um, and we thank you for this record of just a strong marriage of two people who loved each other, who loved Paul, who loved the church, and most of all loved you. In Jesus' name, amen.